Hello and thank you for joining us on the Tuesday edition of Journalist Hangouts. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. Today on the program, pastors Adeboye Kumui defend use of Twitter. Envoys again reject ban as entrepreneurs say suspension has hit them badly. President Buhari stresses need for synergy of forces to end insecurity as bandits kill 30 in attack on Zafara communities. And later on the show, Senator Wamako warns against killing of northerners in southeast, says Igbo elites must pick up. I'll be hanging out with Babaji de Koladi Otitoju and Mio Akikwelu. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. Let's begin on the celebratory mood as journalist hangout continues to receive HANA globally. Some fans from Dubai in United Arab Emirates honored Babajide and myself with Lifetime Achievement Award in recognition and appreciation of our service to humanity. A committed fan, Teru Olale, came all the way from Dubai to present this award. Let's share that moment with you. journalist and that is that not even people within uh, in the country alone appreciate this program people watching from outside Nigeria I told you that uh, people from United Arab Emirates America Canada London we have our fan base everywhere in the world so journalist and that's like an international program thank you for this gesture welcome sir it's very sir. I appreciate you for everything you've been doing regarding uh, social and all issues in Nigeria Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. You are far away from us in the United Arab Emirates, but you appreciate what we do in our country. Uh, this is really special to me because I received awards within our country, but to come all the way from the United Arab Emirates in particular to present us this set of awards is truly, truly sorry. I appreciate you for this gesture. Thank you so much. Welcome, sir. And I want to tell our viewers that we will continue to give our best. Um, at the time when we started this program, we never knew it would get this big. We continue to give our best. Journalists and guards will continue to bring the troops to every home in our country. Wow. Yeah, I remember one time like that in um, Dubai. Somebody bought me free dinner. And that person is your family. I think that person is your friend. Yeah. I said, I um, keep telling me, I keep telling me, I come from let me, God in McDonald's. Let me, let me <laughs> congratulate both of you. And um, <laughs> let me also congratulate um, journalist Hangout. Um, it's a thing of pride that um, I'm involved with the program. I know how people value the program all over the country, all over the world. I used to tell Babaji Day that um, I believe that um, most fans of journalists and that are actually based outside this country. Mm, you know, so. because, because it's on satellite, people watch it. And um, our, our, our brothers and sisters in diaspora uh, really love the program. Anytime I travel out of the country, there's no time I've traveled and somebody have not woke up to me at the airport, maybe in any country that I'm in, and say, oh, you, you, your face looks familiar, and I know the next thing that will call. I just say, yeah, I'm, I'm, maybe, maybe people look alike and all that. And the person will sit somewhere and be looking at me, looking at me, they will come and I say, are you a journalist? And I will say, hey, hey, journalist, you know. So I know, I, know, I know the reach of the program, and I mm -hmm. hope that um, we won't disappoint uh, numerous fans who promise. believe in us. Well, another honor has come the way of Babajide this time. His hometown in Kogi State, Ekinyade, will honor him as one of the pioneer recipients of the Noble Omoatata Hall of Fame Award at the 27th of Ekinyade Cultural Day. That's um, at the 27th Ekinyade Cultural Day, scheduled to hold on the 18th and 19th of June. Babajide, 
Omo Atata. <laughs> Omo Atata. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ekinade in Kogi State. <laughs> no, no, before I say something, and you see why this award is very important. Mm. It's because um, there is this idea that um, a prophet is not um, honored in his home. Yes, yes, yes. And um, it is when, when people, when your kindred, people who who saw you grow, who mm. know you, who know mm. your family mm. tree, who when they when they decide to honor you, is there is no honor that is higher than that. Mm. Because um, if you don't excel in your community, mm. you understand, you cannot convince them that you have excelled all around the world. Mm. You know, um, Virgil has this award in several for her, mm -hmm. but for for his people, you know, a lot of people do not really know that's from Kogi, mm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it's, it's a long time that they've hijacked him from Kogi, mm -hmm. so for his people to to identify him, you know, because you know in in you know the um, his area of the north is the Okun, I think Okun, right? Mm -hmm. Okun, yes. Yes. yes, Okun, Okun, mm -hmm. which is the Yoruba speaking area, mm -hmm. and you know in 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 our, in in Yoruba community they don't they don't honor you. If you don't deserve it, hmm. you understand. Jire, I remember the gist you told me about uh, the role that played with the traditional ruler, yes. and uh, you were given a stern warning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell Abia, tell Abia. Well, uh, you know, I used to say that um, um, Ekiti. Uh, you're from Omo Ekiti. That I'm That's from Ekiti. Omo. Yeah, it's my adopted Ekiti state. South. My dad had begged me repeatedly that I should stop saying that. He said it was an embarrassment for him. Hmm. But I refused to listen. I continued to say that. And, um, the I old man wasn't happy. He was not happy. So last December, I was home. Suddenly, the traditional ruler of my hometown and the traditional ruler of the local government, that's Olujumu. Hmm. And it's a first class traditional ruler in Kogi State. I just, they just came to my house. Hmm and said, we are proud of you, you, are, you make us proud. Why are you denying us? Hmm. From today, we don't want to hear you say you are from um, Ekiti anymore. There was nothing I could do. It's I a just, thing of listening to them. They inside, don't my, inside my parlor, there was nothing I could do. Except if I wanted them to give me Roya, <laughs> so, and I wasn't going to allow that to happen. So I, I prostrated, apologized, and uh, um, I also received an award in Kaba, uh, which is Very close. Omo, Omo Kun okay. award. Yes, I received it, and I, I told them that well, I'll come back home to see how. I can contribute to home. Yes, and I, I, I'm confident that the governor of Kogi will not make me regret going back to Kogi because I've already told them that there must be improvements. Now I'm hearing about the Ganaja overhead bridge. I'm hearing about the hospital in uh, Kenya that Governor Yabelo is doing. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that will make me feel happy and um, yeah, feel proud. I want to remain here. <laughs> I don't want um, to be disappointed by the government of my state. So I don't want to say more than that. I'm sure Governor Yabelo is watching me. He knows <laughs> what I want. He knows that I want the progress of my state. Hmm. That, that's the only way I can be proud of my state. So. The 27th um, Ekinadi Cultural Day, scheduled to hold on the 18th and 19th of June. I want to say congratulations in advance. Omatata, Hall of Fame. Omatata, by the way, means uh, favorite um, son, Abi. Favorite son. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, congratulations to Baba Jiri Kola Day. Thank you. And and I we'll thank see. every one of us, the mm. uh, journalists hang out, because it's not uh, a one mountain. I can't sit here, sit here alone and be talking. Mm. You all have uh, uh, different roles. Yes, mm. and I'm grateful for all the support um, from our guests, Mayor, and the rest of them. MJ and Co. MJ uh, mm -hmm. and the backroom boys and guests. Yes, so led by Lua Twin. Yes, uh, producer. <laughs> so, <laughs> Things will get better. Things will get better. All right. Now to the main issue of the day. 
Okay, different reactions are trailing the suspension of operations of micro blogging platform Twitter in Nigeria. Some clergymen continue to tweet despite the ban by governments. General Overseer of Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboe, and the General Superintendent of Deeper Life Christian Ministry, Pastor William Kumi, say they will continue to use Twitter to address their global audience since they are covered by the United Nations Charter on Human Rights. In the same vein, envoys from the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, and the European Union which rated their opposition to the bank, to the ban. As entrepreneur says, the ban has cost them considerable losses. Oof, did they? It's a running story. We're still on this. Yes. And um, the kind of image, mm. international attention we've gotten is not um, so favorable because of the ban of this Twitter. Mm. Yesterday, you tried to dissect it. There's a, it has two sides to it, and it's not the federal government cannot be entirely to blame. Yes. And um, Twitter, they also had a role that they played in. Um, causing this to happen. Yes, past crisis in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, the international community, they are looking at it from the perspective of freedom of speech, yes. freedom of information, and everything. Yes, that's the way they are looking at it. And um, Baba Dewe quoted Article 19 of the UN Universal Declaration on Human Rights. It says that everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, um, to receive an important information and ideas through any media, regardless of frontiers. This is um, it's clear enough. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and an important information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontier. So when you're talking about any media, I'm talking about um, Twitter is one of the... Mm -hmm. um, avenues through which one can receive information and know that we, the government had a meeting with uh, those envoys yesterday mm. and you can see that they stuck to their guns that no this ban is not good enough when you look at some of the countries that have banned twitter mm. Mm. They're I, not i'm not saying that twitter did not create some of the um, did not create some of the conditions that pushed government to act. Mm. I even felt that if they were to act and for us to, to be able to say it was timely and justified, it should have been immediately after the answers. Yes. Given the role, the, the quantum of information, the owner of about Twitter the himself yes. played, mm. and even coaching Nigerians about how to circumvent the clamp down by CBN mm. on the finances of the promoters of NSAS. Mm. You know, government could use that as an excuse. Yeah. And the fact that a lot of the people who are uh, getting violent, attacking TVC and other places, who are mm. mobilizing so one another through Twitter. Through Twitter. Mm. So, but this one happened, the president's tweet was taken down and then we took this decision. As far as those envoys are not con are concerned, this is a harsh decision. And when you look at the countries that had banned Twitter, oh. Nigeria is not in the class of those countries. At all. Ours is a democratic nation. Oh. Uh, and <laughs> we are not dictatorial. <laughs> North Korea. <laughs> we, we are not dictatorial. You can't, you can't put us in the <laughs> same class as North Korea. <laughs> Unfortunately, you see, even abroad, when some of these infractions happen, they will accept it like that. Imagine the strongest man in the world, President Donald Trump. Mm. Imagine Twitter banning Donald Trump. Taking, many times they've removed his post mm. that he didn't do anything. Then they didn't stop at that. They even 
uh, <laughs> uh, removed him from they removed the man totally. And the time when he was still president, well, nothing happened. I can tell you that many presidents in the world have suffered from Twitter one way or another. But because of the very strong democratic tenets mm. that prevail in those places, mm. they didn't really take action. Mm. So when you look at those of us who have banned Twitter, you don't want to see your country amongst those countries. Mm. Because they are the highly, highly, highly repressive regimes. Mm. You know, North Korea, China, there's no democracy in China, we know that, <laughs> so we are not surprised. You know. So, I believe that even Twitter at this point, they've learned some lessons and some American officials are already talking to the federal government, mm. looking for a solution to this. I think from uh, the president and his team needs to, in view of the fact that appeals, they are making appeals to them now from the true diplomatic channels, the Americans um, who uh, which is the home country of Twitter. Mm. They know what they are going to lose if Twitter uh, does not uh, function in our country. I think that this is not a suspension that should be made to last long. Mm. Because the blowback, yeah. we may not find the blowback funny. Mm. People uh, many times will not see these things coming because they are filled with emotions. Mm. But some of us are able to sit back and ask yourself, where is this likely to end? Hmm. You've made a point. You've made a valid point that Twitter was being used to undermine security in your country. Hmm. And Twitter, by suddenly now removing Nam Dikano's tweet, hmm. have in a way admitted that they were wrong. Hmm. Because why leave those tweets in the first place? <laughs> you know? It's quite exciting. Yeah. Hmm. So now, hmm. I don't want this um, ban to last long in view of the groundswell of opposition internationally against it. Hmm. No matter the point that you have, people have that fear that, ah, hmm. you are planning something big, you could even move to Twitter, to, uh, to Facebook and all that. Hmm. It is the reason why we have to take, uh, take the right reason. decision. Mayor, what, what do you read between the lines? Let me, let, me, let me start by saying that I'm disappointed in this government. I'm not a friend of this government. I sincerely believe that um, when you look at the security situation in the country, that this government is the worst government that we've had since 1960. That's my We belief. are talking Twitter now. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm mm -hmm. But what I'm coming to say is that, but that notwithstanding, that notwithstanding, if government of Nigeria, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. makes an order, it must be obeyed. If we are practicing democracy, the foundation of democracy is the rule of law. So if the government, in its wisdom, decides that Twitter should be suspended, people should comply with that. For Baba Adeboye and people like um, the um, general overseer of Deeper Life, mm -hmm. and, and for Erufai to continue to tweet when the government has said that, to me, is irresponsible. You cannot, if you say you are passing democracy, then there must be rule of law. You must follow the rule of law. If you don't agree with the decision of government, you approach the courts. And the court will be able to rule over it that it is not legal mm -hmm. and that it is an infringement on the fundamental rights of Nigerians. Then you cannot proceed from there and tweet. But if everybody says we want to do what we like, if we don't agree with the decision of government, because of that, we should do it our way. That is not right. Especially for people who occupy important positions like Baba Adebo. Baba Adebo is head of Redeem. There are millions of members of Redeem Church in this country. Millions of members of, um, of um, Deeper Life. When the, when the general overseer says, I don't believe in this um, government order and I'm going to defy it, you have sent a message that your members can defy it. If all of us decide to do that, when government says this is the position of government and we defy it, then the, the next thing is anarchy. So mm. I don't support that. Mm. I think they should not have, they should not have um, used that. They can ask their, their athletes in other countries to continue to use that tweet. But for them to use Twitter mm -hmm. when the government, their, their Twitter handle. For example, I read a release from that communications. 
And that communication said, we do not agree with this directive. Yeah, um, the yes, director of uh, That we do not agree with this directive. Media we, houses we, we still intend to approach the court for it, but we will obey. And henceforth, we are suspending our Twitter handle. And I think, if I'm not wrong, TVC has also suspended their own um, Twitter handle. When there is a law, when the government, when the, when the state issues a, um, a, a, an instruct or, or make a suspension, we have to comply with it. Hmm. That is what the rule of law says. If you want to practice democracy, the foundation of it is the rule of law. Do you know the international community is really against this ban and they told the government yesterday what can be done at this, um, this stage? Mm, that's, that's what I said earlier, that this is not a ban that should last so long because I'm aware that even the Americans um, at a very high level, they are talking to our president um, on this matter. So once it is evident that Twitter has learned its lessons and you can extract some commitment from them, but you've got to let it go. Otherwise, in the final analysis, you, you may lose face and even lose some of your, some of the people sympathetic to you about this matter. I personally, while I recognized that um, Twitter was becoming um, dictatorial, imagine, imagine um, a technological giant that is not a social enterprise taking decisions that are political in nature and being dictatorial, be not being objective in many cases. So we've sent a message and I believe that the message is clear and they are beginning to even take some measures like removing uh, Unam the Kano's tweets, which they believe must have angered the Nigerian authorities. Under that situation, you have no choice to, to try to, 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 to let it go. Hmm. All right. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives is set to investigate whether the Twitter ban in Nigeria conforms with the law. Let's hear from the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila. Twitter, like other social media networks, is an important tool for communication and for commerce in Nigeria, particularly among the younger generation who have used these networks for enterprise and innovation with great success. The House also recognizes that as social media has been a tool for good, it can also be a tool for bad actors. As such, the government has a legitimate interest in ensuring that these platforms are not used to commit vile actions against individuals and the state. The proper role of the legislature in circumstances like this is first to peel back the layers of the decision-making process to unravel the issues until we develop an understanding of the why and the how of executive decisions. Following that, the legislature must make sure that regulatory and enforcement actions by the government and in are in accordance with the laws of the land, that due process of law has been followed to the latter, and that the outcomes of regulatory decisions do not result in adverse consequences for the country and all our people. Fidelity to our responsibilities in situations like this require the legislature and legislators to, as in the words of Rudyard Kipling, keep your head when all about you are losing theirs. We listen to the agitation of the people, but we also hear from government, so that from the abundance of information, we reach the level of awareness that allows us to discharge our role dispassionately. It is in service of our obligations under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and our moral duty to the Nigerian people that the leadership of the House has mandated from today, the House Committees on Communication, Justice, Information and Culture, and National Security and Intelligence to immediately commence an investigation to determine, one, the circumstances of the decision by the federal government of Nigeria to ban the operations of Twitter in Nigeria, and two, the legal authority for the ban on the operations of Twitter in Nigeria. The committees are additionally mandated to invite the Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohamed, to brief the House of Representatives on the objectives, intent, and duration of the suspension 
of Twitter in Nigeria and to report to the House within 10 days. The joint report of the committees will guide further action by the House of Representatives on this matter. I urge the committees to act with speed and sound judgment to address this important issue. Right, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. We'll take this break. When we come back, we'll discuss more. Please don't go away. Welcome back. This is Journalist Angout. I still have Mayor Akipolu and Baba Jide Kolade to talk in the house, and we are looking at the ban on Twitter. Mayor, the House of Rep says it wants to investigate the circumstances behind the ban. Do you see anything concrete coming out from this investigation? Yeah, I think they are in order. They are in order because they are part of government, they are the legislative arm of government, and it is important for them to interface with the executive to know the um, the reasons behind the decision and how um, they can influence the executive to be able to look at the larger picture. Like Jide said, um, we are, I, I understand why government had to take the step it did. It's just to send a message to Twitter to say, look, you must not allow your platform to be to used to undermine the security of our country. Mm. And that point has been made and it has been well received. So what is important is for both, both um, parties to interface and then decide quickly how to leave the suspension. And I think that the House getting involved will also assist because the House, the House will be able to know the reasons behind those decisions. They will be able to give their own advice and moving forward. And then both parties can come to a resolution of this uh, misunderstanding. Julie, is this investigation really necessary? I'm not sure it's necessary. The, the House has a position on this matter. They should, they should make their position clear. From what I've seen, the House is not particularly excited about this ban. A lot of people use Twitter. They, they can barely even live their lives without it. <laughs> they, that's the way they reach even their supporters and all that. So they probably felt that the consultation was not enough before this decision was taken. It was hasty. I agree that the decision was hasty. But when you look at investigations that this National Assembly has made in the last four years, or let me say the last two years, they've been largely meaningless and achieving nothing. For example, the NDDC mm. was thoroughly investigated um, by the no, House of Reps <laughs> and the Senate. And everything. All of and drama. The, drama. All of the suggestions that they made to the president were ignored. They told the president the, 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 their, their own resolution was that he should go back to the supervision of the presidency under the office of the Secretary of the That's government. NDDC. Yes. Of course, the president didn't take action. That was why um, Senator Alin Dume was very angry the other day. He said, we will make resolutions here. The executive will not uh, do anything about our resol resolution. So but this one now, how are they sure that anything will come out of it? Maybe uh, this is just an, an attempt to also add to the pressure. Yeah, I think you so. You know, uh, so that government can lift this thing because... In fairness, whenever you look at the list of those countries, you don't want your country to be part of those countries mm -hmm. because those are not democratic nations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's an unwanted company. No matter how Twitter has annoyed us, there ought to be a way by which we can resolve this matter. And Twitter will have a rethink. And I can see that they are trying to do something by taking down those tweets that angered many Nigerians and made them to queue behind their president. They are already uh, taking action. It's best that we don't let this last because it's giving us a bad name already. Okay, let's talk about the economic disadvantages of this ban. You know, 
Oh, it, that's that's a, that's enormous for for all concerned. Um, mm. Twitter will lose money. Mm. Those who use Twitter in Nigeria will also lose money. Mm. Forty million. Especially, Nigerians. and one of the things that the government have to put into consideration is that um, a government that cannot provide job opportunities for its people, you understand? Twitter as a platform and Instagram Some people as an online social media businesses. platform mm. is what a lot of young people use as mm. tools to expand their trade and business. Mm. And naturally, if you ban it or you suspend it in this instance, it will affect um, the kind of business they do and how they reach out to exactly. doing those business. So, mm. Um, it is it is something that will happen, but you see, you cannot you cannot have omelette without breaking eggs. If you if you get involved in a dispute like this, of course there will be repercussions, and some people will have um, uh, 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 will lose um, mm, economic mm. ah. So it's understandable. It's part of the things, part of the price we have to pay for something like this. But I believe that um, the government just want to send a strong message to Twitter, and I think the message has been well received. All right, moving on now. United we stand, divided we fall, is the popular maxim on the importance of unity of purpose. This must be the thought of President Mamadou Bouhari when he restated the need for synergy among armed forces to end insecurity in the country. Meanwhile, 30 persons were reportedly killed with several others injured when bandits stormed Zamfara communities on motorcycles. Jide. Um, was it in Kebi the day before yesterday during um, the weekend? Yeah, 88. It, 88. So when you start hearing this figure, as, and it's so alarming, the number of carnage and bloodshed across yes. the country on a daily I basis. I hope we don't get to that point when loss of lives becomes like breathing in and breathing out. It's yeah, coming to yeah. that. Something, yeah, something common, mm. something normal. Were well, they already? Because to lose 88 persons in one day, in one state, in one state, maybe just a, a few communities, three or four communities. 88. 88 is and you see, as they were losing 88, people were being killed in Benue, people yes. were being killed in, in Niger, mm -hmm. people were being killed in Oyo. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is going on? Are we normal at all? We are not. I mean, we can't be. People can't be dying like this. Mm. I mean, what's, what's going on? We were told that the Zamfara governor has successfully reached out to these bandits. The killings have stopped. This Zurumi, for a long time, we didn't hear about killings there. That's where they've gone to kill 30 people now. Mm. Remember, that was where they kidnapped uh, those twin sisters that wanted to do wedding. That time, almost two years ago. Mm. It's that Zurumi. It's unfortunate that bandits are just doing what they like with our people. Don't forget that those children that were kidnapped in Tegina, yeah. they are still there. there. They are still there. 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 Right there. So as we pay attention to Twitter, we should also pay attention to, to more what, is greater, what is mm. greater than Twitter. The level of killings in our country we have to address it. Mm. Because now, it's beginning to rain in northern Nigeria now. And the cycle of rainfall in any given year is usually not long. Maybe during two to three months, it's gone. But people can't go to their farms. Mm. Go to Kaduna State, Igabi. Igabi local government is one of the worst hit by banditry. Mm. People can't go to their farms. Why won't hunger rain in the land. Why won't food be expensive? Why won't food be expensive? Why won't they send a bag of beans for 72,000 naira from, from our country? From 28,000 naira. 72,000. People are going through a lot. The capacity of Nigeria, the Nigerian to admit shock is legendary. Hmm. In other places, in Sudan, <laughs> they chased President Nimeri away because of bread. Because they yeah. increased bread price. Yeah. Hmm. Bread, oh. Now, in our own case, bread is expensive, uh, uh, granite is expensive, Gary. Gary is expensive, no longer for the poor, uh, beans is expensive. What? What's going on? Pure water. Everything. I think the problem <laughs> has to do with the fact that this government seems to have given up. 
How? Because when these killings happen, government do not even react. We don't hear anything from mm -hmm. our president. Mm -hmm. Giving orders that um, there should be a synergy between the security forces is tight. It's, it's giving. That is what they should do. I mean, if you if you are, if you are, if there is a security situation, that should be synergy between among yeah. other. Yeah, but, but my own but, problem but is that, it has not always been. Yes, yeah, but my own problem is that they are not doing that because they are not even doing the needful, whether because of lack of lack of resources or personnel. They are not because we discussed it here one time, and I said, look, the strategy we are using. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a military person, but the strategy we are using against these bandits is faulty. The strategy is faulty because if you face them in one state, they will just move away from that state mm -hmm. to another state. They will just enter the KB now. Yes, they will just they stay in that state KB before. and wait for another time. When you attack them in that state, they move from that state, they move to another state. That is a wrong strategy. We have to take them on Continue. at the same time because these people, we know where they are. They are in the forest region of all those states. You cannot allow them to stay in the forest and then you will, because the problem that we have now is that the strategy we are using is that it's containment. We stay. We wait for them. When they come and attack in this place, we try to defend or hold that place. They move to another place. So before we even, before our security forces can even react, they've already killed 88 people hmm. and then move back to the forest. How can we continue so to do that? How can people kill 88 and get away with it? Just how like can, that. And they will say we have a government. How can you kill 88, 88 people? The 88 other day in the Barapa, they went to the governor, they killed people there. Nobody said anything. The governor didn't say anything. The president didn't say anything. We the made it look at, The governor called for calm. Yeah, we, we, they made it look as if dying is a normal thing in Nigeria. It shouldn't be so. Hmm. It shouldn't be. You know, one other thing is that these parents, they are, they are left to their feet. That's oh. Your children was kidnapped. They were kidnapped by these bandits. Okay, they I had to open the channel, negotiation channel uh, with the yes, bandits. Left, left alone. They had to sell their properties. Left alone by government. They had to raise the money. Government that should have ensured that their the children. kidnapping didn't happen in the first place. Mm. Our governments can protect the people, whether at state level or um, federal, level. federal level. We can't protect the people anymore. Now, we are saying that they should not pay ransom. Is that not a joke? And a senator who clearly has lost ideas about what to present on the floor is trying to criminalize paying ransom. Mm -hmm. Whereas if that senator's relation gets mm. kidnapped... He will pay ransom. He will pay ransom. He may not even pay through third party. He may pay by himself. <laughs> you know, so this is the thing. People will pay ransom. They will ignore you. They will spit in your face. Mm. They will pay ransom if they are, they are in a situation whereby they are watching their children. You can imagine when you watch those, uh, those Afaka students mm. being flogged. If you are a parent, mm. if you had a child among them, very if very you much. had your son among them, won't you quickly do something? They've sold, someone sold his house, you know? He sold his house and kept just one million to rent Mm. A place. To be all that they had labored for in yes. their lives. From being a landlord, who will now go and stay in the All that they had labored. So which, of that, which of that the state After a few them. years, you just hear that he died. Mm. He has died of depression. Mm. You know? Or there is no... Families like that. There the is no anti... Is out to run out of Nigeria. Where, will they, where is they the money to, to run them. out? Where is the money? I said everything that he had, he sold. Where is he running to? <laughs> The people who are running out, they are comfortable, they can pay for flights mm. and all that. They can, mm. pay, they can pay their way to that place and some months to settle down. Somebody who has sold everything that he's got, where is he running to? He will stay here. This is where there is no antidepressant that he can consume that will solve his problem. There's none. So this is the thing. Government has to do much better than they are doing on the security of our nation. Mm. Everywhere is the same story. And some people don't want you to say it. In any case, those ones are wasting their time. <laughs> because we will say it. We'll keep saying it. If, if it's the only topic that we have, we'll say it. Until be, the problem should, is solved. Those people should be embarrassed that what is happening is happening. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm, a, if I'm an official of state, maybe a minister or something, I, sh I should be embarrassed of what is going on. No, I think, because I think they are embarrassed. Yes, because, because you for protect, a minister yes. to come out to say we are bleeding, or what was the mm, language? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the because if you cannot protect your citizens, didn't say that mm. last year. If you don't, if you can't protect your citizens, so they are embarrassed. you have lost your right as a government. Because the primary duty of government is protection of lives and property. Hmm. That's the primary duty of government. Hmm. And finally, 
Former Governor of Sokoto State, Senator Aliyu Wamako, has won against killing of northerners in the southeast. He wants political, traditional, and opinion leaders in the region to break their silence and call to other hired youths causing havoc to forestall retaliation. Senator Wamako says continued silence of leaders from the zone amounts to endorsement of the carnage on innocent citizens. Meanwhile, many Igbo youths are not in support of the path of perdition being told by secessionist agitators in the region. Some of them who staged a protest at the High Commission of the United Kingdom in Nigeria say, said they are not in support of Nam Dekano and his cohorts. They called for his arrests and prosecution. Prosecution. Let's hear them. We don't want Nam Dekano to be killing our people again. Okay. Our people have died enough. Yes. He has no agenda. He has no plans. Nam Dekano is a close. What we want is a peaceful society. Yes. Nam Dekano is just sending the youth to go and die unnecessarily. Over nothing. He brags that he has atomic bomb. He has this, he has that, he has nothing. And the youth believe him. And he's hiding in UK. He's a British citizen. So we, we are here today at the British High Commission to submit a letter to the British ambassador that his citizen or her citizen is causing problem here in our country. They have threatened, they, when I announced that I was coming to, I was, I was going to come here, they threatened to kill my mother and my younger ones. As I'm talking to you now, I don't know what, if the plan is still on, on ground. So I'm reporting him to the British ambassador so that he will take it to Her Majesty the Queen and let her know that her citizen is causing problem here for us. Go to my social media page, you see all the threats to my life. We've said it before, we don't want Nam Dekano's pattern in this our country. He told us, he, 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 he made everybody in the Southeast to believe that we should boycott the election, which people accepted. On that day, two days to the election, he collected money and then said that the referendum document has been signed, sealed and delivered, that after the election we are going to have a referendum. It is over four years now, or Not three years now after the election. And he's still selling lies and to people. And he's still telling us again to, that we should fight for referendum. Which referendum? By again? killing soldiers and policemen. Now, the next strategy he's doing now, he's not killing policemen and he's not killing army men in the southeast. How can you kill policemen and army men and expect them to keep quiet? These are their colleagues. Some of them are their best friends. And they are defenders of the and country. The, the worst part is that even the policemen is killing and the army men is killing are also from, from, from the so called Biafra. So, how, how is he rescuing us? Anyone, anyone that says anything in the South is he will send his men to go and kill him. Yeah. Anyone that says anything in the South is he will send his men to go and kill her. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. We've had enough of Nam Dekano and we are saying no to him. Yeah. The only way we can register our grievance is to go to his country. His country is Britain, that is the passport he's using. So we are here today at the British Embassy to let them understand that we are not happy with what their son is doing. Yeah. IPOB is registered in Britain. So we are calling for an independent investigation towards all the activities of Nam Dekano. Nam Dekano bury people alive in the southeast. Nam Dekano send his talks to go and kill people. Prophet Woko is dead. They, 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 they killed him. Akwara is why, missing. Akwara is, is missing. Akwara was his, was his former boy. Abambo was because, kidnapped and they tried to bury her alive. Because he was against some of his policies, especially to go and be killing police officers and army officers. For what? Is that, how many police officers are you going to kill? Yeah. How many? How many other are you going to kill? If you kill, they will still recruit them and put there again. Yeah. So what is the what what is the end result of your killing of police, police officers? Yes. So today, we the Igbo youths in Nigeria and in diaspora yeah. are here Detox. to protest that Nam the Kano's case file must be opened Amen. in Britain. Yeah. So that they will investigate all his atrocities. Yes. They will investigate all the allegations we are labeling against him, which yes. are written in this book. Yeah. They will investigate everything about him. Yes. So that we have a peaceful society. Yeah. We are not slaves anywhere. Yeah. We are free men. We are free men. What his activities. And he should stop threatening people. Yeah. Mm. All right. Those are the youths, they went to um, the stage of protest at the High Commission of the United Kingdom in Nigeria, Nigeria and 
debunking that notion that it's not all Igbo youths in Nigeria that uh, are in support of what Nam Dekano is doing. Jiri, let's start from Senator Aliyu Uamako that warned against the killing of Northerners in the Southeast. Yeah, you know, after the, I think during the answers, the uh, protest, there were attacks on Northerners in River State and a few states uh, of the Southeast. And then there was also the attack on the the truck bearing onions. Um, Free for onions. And another attack on um, a truck um, bearing cows and all that. I think that one had an accident. He killed eight persons. He lost his brake and killed people. So they set it ablaze along with the cows inside. Oh. So some of these things have really angered our friends in the north. And Senator Wamako is saying, look, we've been doing our best to calm people down, to tell them not to throw the part of vengeance that it will get to a point that it will be impossible to calm people down. Mm. But the point that I have to make, and that video that we showed shows clearly that it's not everyone in the Southeast that supports Nam Dekano. Not even the majority. And Senator Wamako wants the elites, the elites to come out and openly denounce Nam Dekano and his activities. I don't think that is even the solution. We have a situation in which he has already brainwashed a lot of these young people. Mm. If the elites, the SA face of this world, come out to say, oh, UNAMD, uh, you are this, UNAMD, he will send people to go and kill them. And mm. government will not be able to protect those people. Mm. Because we, we've seen a lot, and there has been consistent killing of Southeasterners, much more than even Northerners in the Southeast. That is a fact. Fact. South Easterners, Ibus, are being killed much more than Northerners in the Southeast. The facts are there. If you don't support yeah. hip-hop, If yes. you don't support, they come for you, they burn your house. People can go to burn the house of a governor. So, mere appealing to them is not the solution. Mm. I believe that since they have chosen the path of violence, then they have to... It's a military action that has to be uh, 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 used against them. But in using the military action, do not kill innocent youths from the East. Mm -hmm. Identify ESN members, those who are killing policemen, those who are burning uh, them, go after them. Don't kill innocent people. So, uh, Senator Wamako must know, and that was why we played that video. Don't imagine that everyone appears to like the fact that this violence is happening or uh, northern traders are being attacked. No. They too do not like what's going on. Their lives too are not safe. You remember the man who, who called us the other day and said as early as 6 p.m. people are running into their houses. Mm. Those doing uh, POS business, From their Uber. lives are not safe. Uber. So Uber. nobody is enjoying. Look at Oweri that used to be the, the bubbling state. Mm. of the southeast yes mm. at a point in most states in most states was uh recording the highest cement sales from dangote the second highest in our country Imo, mm. because of uh, buildings springing up there the economy was doing well suddenly now that Imo, nobody wants to go there mm. so this is the situation he has to realize that look it's not all of these people who support uh, Nam Dikano. I want, I want to look at it from this point. Mm -hmm. um, like Jide said, um, what ESN is doing in the East affects everybody, both Igbos and non Igbos. So it is not right or not correct to think that it's an attack on Northern traders. No, it is not. But what is going on, there is, there is need for the governors in the Southeast mm -hmm to do more. Mm. They are so weak, they are so weak right now that they believe that confronting ASN will affect them. It's dangerous for them. It's dangerous mm. for them. So because of that, 
they have they have abdicated their powers because as governors they should they have enough security they should be able to come out and tell ESL to say look what you are doing is not representing our interests but they, they are facing but everybody is because if the governors if the governors keep quiet and they cannot talk how do you expect the elites to yeah, do that. The, 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 face, yeah. the elites cannot do that because when the governors with the that have the apparatus uh, 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 of state in their hands could not do anything, you could not attack the ESL. head of um, Agu, one major general was said yeah. to have uh, you know, uh, yeah, maybe they to, uh, maybe to threaten them. Mm. Yes. But you see the thing is the the governor in the southeast who came out openly with the desire to fight these people is the governor of Imo State. Mm. You can see what they've exactly. turned. They've yeah. turned the state to others. It's deliberately if, that they are targeting. No, deliberately. Because of hope is on yes, the but no. but if if others could have shown, because you see the all mark of leadership is courage. You have to show courage. You cannot sit and and check your responsibility as governor of a state. Uh, oh, but, but I want us to aggregate uh, this fact that okay, it's not. We have friends that from the southeast yeah. they are doing their businesses in Lagos, in Abuja. Yeah. They are glittered <laughs> all over the place and they are doing very well. So people like that will not but, are, but no, so yes, but they are at risk. Behind. But they are at risk. Where they are at risk is that if this insecurity that is going on in the southeast, if we allow it to fester, nobody can 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 imagine what will come after that. Because you see, fear is the key to put people to make people do what you want them to do. And that is what IPOB and ESN is doing. They'll be, able to, they'll be able to put that fear to say, look, if we don't do what we want, we are, going to, we are going to come for you. When they announce that people should stay at home, majority of those who stay at home is not because they believe in IPOB or ESN. It's out of fear. But it's mm. out of fear. Mm. They know that. If these people, even the few, the ones that were the few videos that we saw, molested, they were molested and If you look at a state like, uh, like Rivers, mm. which uh, will make me uh, to believe, uh, to agree with uh, Mayor, that the, those governors are not doing enough. In the case of Rivers, mm. Governor Wiki, we case to, told them, you are not welcome here. In my state. Mm. And he has been threatening them that, their heads will be cut. He's been saying all kinds of uh, <laughs> things to them to scare them. They also know that with that kind of person, even the way he talks, mm. his voice is mm, mm. enough to drive Scary. fear mm. into you. But they tried it in the state. They mm. went to oh, 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 now um, that that uh, sit at home order mm. did not work in River State. People mm. went about their businesses. Yeah. Uh, business premises were uh, open. There's nothing like that. It took charge. Yes, because they can see that he's constantly warning them, constantly talking. This is not Our friends in the southeast, the Bubiago came very late. Mm. What were they waiting for? The moment they came up with a more technical, they too should have done it. But they refused. Mm. They refused. Mm. So now people are being killed. I don't want to see the price of killings in northern Nigeria. It's not good at all. Ibos, Ibos have done very well in business in northern Nigeria. Of course. You go to Kano, you ah. go to Abuja especially. Ah, ah, Landed property. Of course. Of course. So we can the, 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 the thing is a lot of Igbos have faith in our country. They want to remain here. It's just a few violent ones that are that are blackmailing Everybody are instilling fear in people. Especially this is what people in diaspora. This is what, and they are far they are away the from them. They keep people. Yeah, they are not sending money. They are not sending money. Yeah, they are not sending money. And they are safe. Yeah, they are. They are the one championing it. This is why people, our friends in the north, no matter the provocation, I don't expect them to. They can you know send people who have not offended yes, them and start the, killing them. Look at the we should have grown beyond that mm, level. Mm. They should realize that mm. these people too don't like what is going on. Yeah. You mm. can see those young people. That boy mm. even opened his face. Mm. At the risk of his life, he removed mm. yes, he said, let them see my face. Know, they don't want the carnage that is going on. Let's not, because they are getting away with carnage, now imagine that, oh, everyone... Uh, it's in support, it's of, in support yeah. of it. No, not everyone is in no, support no. of it. So the majority of the people are not in support. They're not, they are not. They are not. This is what I want Senator Wamako and other leaders. I thank them for the role they are playing to calm the youth down. Mm. And they should continue to do that until 
the Nigerian Armed Forces defeat the yes, enemies of peace in the Southeast, and our people in the Southeast will be able to live uh, in peace. In any case, too, the killings in the Northwest, Senator Wamako is one of the big politicians uh, in, the, in the Northwest. He has tremendous support base. The killings need to end. Mm -hmm. Killing 88 people in one day in, ah, in one shocking. state. <laughs> and in Sokoto, where Senator Wamako comes from, people are being killed in Rabah, in Tureta, in Isa, Banders, in, in uh, Sabombrini, mm -hmm. all of those places. He has to also play his part mm -hmm. to ensure that in his home state, those needless killings stop. Mm -hmm. This okay. is my advice to him. Okay. I have to leave it there. And I align with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. Thank, Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank, Thank you. you. And um, the Omar Tata of uh, Omar Tata. Tata. <laughs> 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 of <Ikea. laughs> Thank you for your contribution. Thanks. <laughs> if you can make it down to uh, no, of Kogutis. course, yes, it's, it's <laughs> going to be there. <laughs> and that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another edition of the program. Don't forget, journalists hang out on Sunday. That's from 1:30 p.m. to 3:30 p.m. For journalists hang out on Sunday. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodele Zubakun. Well, bye for now and God bless Nigeria.